Hello everyone, this is Dr. Juwan. If you're new to my channel, thank you very much for turning it on. If you haven't done so, could you do me a huge favor? Hit the subscribe button down below and right next to it is the bell notification because when I upload videos like this, you'll be first to be notified. And if you're watching on Facebook, thank you very much. Again, I always appreciate a growing audience. If you find this information valuable, please share with a friend and hit the like button down below. And if you find that this information is valuable and you want to contact me for a free consultation, please hit the link below, follow my webpage, book me now for about 15 minutes and see if I can help you out. Thanks for watching. Take care. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Jawad. In this short video, I'm going to answer a question that I'm regularly asked and it's kind of a touchy subject is What's the deal with soy isoflavones? Because in previous videos and throughout the area, we know that eating soy, is it good for you? Is it bad for you? What's the deal with soy? Because there's so many conflicting uh, research things out there that is soy good for you, is it bad for you? Now in the previous videos, I usually tear, veer towards the fact that I just try to uh, avoid soy altogether. Reason being is because with soy, Soy contains what's called phytoestrogens. Now in the States, we, because it's synthetic, 90% of soy food is GMO. So it's genetically modified organisms. So what it's going to do is actually going to increase the bad estrogen in our system because we do have a balance of good estrogen and bad estrogen. And with soy, especially the non-fermented kind in the States, it increases cancer risk and it increases a lot of chemical imbalances because it's increasing the receptors, I'm sorry, it's simulating the, the receptors for the bad estrogens throughout the system, which can cause a lot of sickness, illness, and disease. Now, let's back it up a little bit. The question is, what about soy isoflavones? Because that's a totally different subject altogether. Now, let me just clarify, because estrogen is good. Because a lot of argument comes up that says, well, what about estrogen? Isn't that good for the female system? Yes, it is. Estrogen is phenomenal for a woman's body because, again, it decreases bone loss. It's healthy for brain. It's good for heart health. It's good for the endothelial lining health of the arteries. So estrogen is good for the system in of itself. However, within the last 30 years with soy modification, there has been this huge imbalance of soy throughout the body, which again, it's causing a lot of sickness, illness, and disease. So let me just back it up a little bit. So when I talk about the receptors, now we have the alpha receptors and we have the beta receptors for the estrogen. Now that we want to go back and forth, okay, and according to where you are in your life. So this, the alpha receptors are, they stimulate what's called cell proliferation. Now when a female has her menstrual cycle, what's happening is that the cell proliferate, the uterine lining has to build up again. So the alpha, the alpha estrogen receptors are good for cell proliferation in the endometrial tissue. It targets the breast tissue. Also too, if there's an imbalance, it's going to affect the fat, estrogen related fat tissue. Now flip it over with the beta, beta estrogen receptors, this would be deemed like the good receptors, especially in postmenopausal females, because it's good for growth tissue. It's good for brain. It's good for collagen. It's good for bone. Now the beta, the beta estrogen receptor works on the central nervous system and also the immune response. And also, so this would be deemed the good, good estrogen throughout the system or the anti-cancer. So you can, there, there is a balance between the two. However, if you're taking in too much of the bad estrogen related foods, you're gonna throw off the balanced system and you may be more over in the, the alpha, alpha receptors being stimulated as opposed to a healthy balance of more beta than alpha. Okay, so it's not bad. The soy isoflavins are actually good for you. Now, again, why, does, why is it so good for you? One thing for certain, avoid soy isolates because there's different types of soy. So when you're looking at the labels, you want to avoid certain, certain soy isolates. Because with the isoflavones, what's good, again, it lowers the hormone levels that stimulates the cancer cells. So what's going to do is going to decrease the cell division. In addition, it increases the protein that carry hormones. We have proteins that carry hormones called sex hormone binding globulins. Now, when there's too much of that, it throws off the estrogen and testosterone balance. So again, what it does, it blocks the estrogen and testosterone receptors, so it weakens the estrogen effects on the cell, which is the bad one, okay? 
and in turn it will decrease hot flashes. Now with hot flashes with females, is it an estrogen thing? Is it a progesterone thing? Really what it is, it's an imbalance of both. However, with soy isoflavones, it will actually balance out the good estrogen, so it's going to decrease the hot flashes. It increases the health of the cells lining of the blood vessels. Remember, estrogen is phenomenal for heart health. It's good for arterial health. Now, when you have isoflavones, again, you have the beta receptors, which is good for the tissue. So it's also going to decrease the triglycerides. The triglycerides is the amount of blood in your fat. I'm sorry, yeah, in your fat and your blood, I'm sorry. So by taking the isoflavones, it's actually good for lowering the triglycerides. Decrease cancer risk. Now, a lot, of research, a lot of research out there has been done for isoflavones in the prevention or treatment or avoidance of cancers. And also too, PCOS, breast cancer, uterine cancer, PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome or disease. Also men with prostate cancer because prostate cancer is not a testosterone thing. It's actually an estrogen situation because again, it's too much stimulation of the alpha estrogens. Okay, so when you want foods too, now remember when it comes to foods, you want, you're looking for the fermented foods. The reason why in Asian cultures they have such a decreased risk of health uh, related diseases is because they're still taking in the fermented soy. The problem with the standard American diet, we, again, we change it up so it's non-fermented. So foods like legumes, just for example, soybeans, tofu, chickpeas, walnuts, are just examples of foods loaded with isoflavones. So it's not bad for you. In my previous videos, I usually talk about how soy is bad for you. And that's just because to, have, just to basically stay away, unless you're gonna start doing your homework, soy isoflavones is, not, is actually the better choice. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. If you wanna book me for a consultation, please go to my website. On the, on the upper right hand corner, it says book a consultation. Let's talk for about 15 minutes. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.